OJ Simpson died yesterday, according to his family. OJ Simpson is dead. OJ Simpson is still a murderer. He killed Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman. This happened 30 years ago, June the 12th, 1994. 30 years ago, I will never, ever forget this eve, that eve, because everything changed. Everything. This was before, <coughs> excuse me, social media. This was before Twitter. This was before you had a show in the evening. You had maybe, if, if most people were working, you had no idea what was happening until later on. I had just begun with WABC, the premier talk radio <coughs> station. Excuse me, I just had a, some hot peppers and I am, wow. It was the premier radio station. Certainly in, in talk, nobody in New York could get near it. I was doing morning drive at the time. And again, on this heritage radio station, now it's a, it's a shell, it's a vestige, it's a, I don't know what it is. <clears throat> and when I first got here, I thought, okay, New York, let's see what happens. Let's see what we can do. Again, remember, no Twitter, no social media, no nothing. It was a Friday night. It was a Friday night, <clears throat> pardon me, Reaper X or Pepper X, wow. It was a Friday night, and for some reason I had on, and I don't even watch foot and, uh, basketball, I think it was the Knicks, was it John Starks? Don't ask me, I'm, I, I, I'm just shocked by this. I'm jumping in, if I get a name wrong, forgive me. I don't think so, but I happen to watch this TV. All of a sudden, they break in. The slow speed chase. <clears throat> what the hell is this? O.J. Simpson has been charged or suspected of murdering his wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and Ron Goldman, who is living testimony to the requirement that please make sure you have a good picture of yourself to be used <coughs> in the event you are murdered. Because this guy had on some kind of, he had like a sash or a, remember that picture he had? It was like in a posh dancer. I don't know what the hell it was, but he was. And this is the one they kept using. I mean, who the hell's wrong? What happened? Let's go live right now to law. Anyway, so the, the Knicks, are, what happened? What We're, we're watching this. <clears throat> Pardon me. And I'm watching this. And I said, well, looks like he killed these people. He's guilty. Why is it? Because he's trying to get away. It's called flight. Well, what are you going? No. He he he's he's getting away. If you ever go up to a to a, a fire, it's a house on fire or something. And everybody's running to it, but one person's running away like that. Stop that person. He had something to do with it. It's called flight. He's guilty. He killed these people. Now, at the time, it was like, what are you? What are you what are you talking about? And he started talking about all this stuff. And said, He's guilty. Now the story was as follows. Here's how it developed. It was a white Ford Bronco. Al Cowling, <coughs> excuse me, his friend, AC, gets on the phone, on the cell phone, and there is this, <laughs> they had this all these LAPD cops driving very slowly. This is AC. 
And I thought to myself, who in the hell is this presumptuous son of a bitch? AC. Who's AC? Anyway. I got OJ Simpson here. We don't, I forget what he said. We don't want to be, whatever. The story was that OJ Simpson was in the back of the car, ducked down. He had a 357. $10,000 $10,000 in cash, if I recall correctly, and a suicide note. <clears throat> and apparently, they said, well, what are you doing? He's grieving. Grieving. Either he was going to the uh, grave, or uh, who knows? Who knows what the... It was the wildest thing. Nobody knew anything. And AC... Al Cowling is thinking, look, I'm just driving. What he was saying was, don't shoot my ass. <coughs> OJ's in the back. He's in the back, not me. I'm just driving. So they pull up and OJ goes in and um, whatever. This was the wildest night ever. And the story began to unfold. There were these. And we'll jump through this. I love your comments, by the way. Because I, 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 again, I learned how people will come up with the most ridiculous thing you've ever seen in your life. They will come up with observations that make no sense whatsoever. They try to make it a black thing. O.J. Simpson had nothing to do with the black community. Nothing he wanted. <clears throat> he was at the Brentwood Golf Club. He and his buddy um, Don Olmeyer or whatever he was. Ready to marry the white woman. He, his friends were. He wanted to play golf. He wanted to be on the board. He had nothing to do with the hood. But all of a sudden, O.J. Simpson became, again, pardon me. O.J. Simpson became the symbol of black America. Remember the picture they put of him either on Time or Newsweek? They darkened his mugshot. Ooh. To make him look what? More black? O.J. Simpson was the most popular person. He had it all. Like Bogey and Bacall. Loved. (coughs) Naked gun. Uh, Acting a little bit. Um, you know, sports, whatever. He just he had it all. So what happened? What happened? What happened? Here's a way it would explain what happened. First, he killed them. Not the son, not Justin, not AC, <clears throat> not drug dealers that she owed money to. No, 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 no. I was on this show every, I watch the show every single day. This is when, when Core TV was, there wasn't a Core TV. We didn't know, it, 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 it was, I went, my morning show went to number one at the time. We did two books at the time. I, don't, I have no idea what PPM ratings are doing now. But we had four ones, two four point ones, 12 plus. Never been done ever at that time. Maybe afterwards, I don't know. <laughs> and we only had the OJ hour and the eight o'clock hour. And it was it was the go-to thing every morning because I watched this thing and I loved it. God, I loved it. And it starts off kind of like this, putting this together and going back after the fact. First and foremost, OJ Simpson was at the end of his trajectory. Either as a man, as a sports star, as a beloved, whatever. He was going out or dating at the time a woman named Paula Barbieri. I think she was a, a Playboy model, a Playboy strumpet or whatever she was. And she basically gave him, you know, the boot. OJ's feeling like crap. <coughs> they went to a party at a place called Mezzaluna. 
And that's where Ron Goldman worked. Again, this is all from memory. I just jumped on. I wasn't paying attention. So if I get some of these names wrong, I don't think so, but we'll see. She was there. Remember Yudita? It was Nicole, her mother, Yudita. I think Lou Brown and this band of renown. Lou was the father. Oh, OJ took care of those Brown sisters. Oh, and the other one was, what was it? What was the name of the, the, the one sister? There were like two or three sisters. One wanted to be Denise. It was Denise Brown. Oh, she she wanted to milk this baby for all this worth, but Nicole was it. <coughs> and OJ, I think, uh, helped Lou with a with a hurt dealership or something. Anyway, he did his best for the Brown family. And they basically told him, pound sand, buddy, it's over. So it was one of the two kids, a birthday, first communion, something. He wasn't invited. Furious. He's on the phone with Paula Barbieri, pound sand. His whole world is collapsing. Now, there were some times, there were some people who were suggested, <coughs> suggesting that uh, OJ was really into the, into the dope bad, meth, crank, whatever the hell it was. I have no idea. And that'll prove to be interesting in a moment. So he's he's just furious. Now, at some point, there was a case of a guy when he, when OJ came to visit her, her place. Remember? There were, there were two. There was a Brentwood and then Nicole. Remember her condo? It was on uh, Bundy, right? Wasn't it Bundy? I get him confused. Uh, Nicole. Just let me see. Yes, 875 South Bundy in Brentwood. That was Yes, that's where she resided. Right, Rockingham. He lived in Rockingham. Okay. So Bundy was hers in Brentwood. Do you know, one time OJ showed up and there was a guy, well, this this is, I got to get this name. Forgive me, I just want to get this name. <clears throat> there was a name that was, I won't mention it. Okay, there was a story where Nicole, where OJ shows up. OJ was always going there, always kind of like looking around, always peering about, <coughs> kind of stalking her. There's a story where he goes in and looks and sees her, dare I say, the story was, I believe, servicing this fellow. I don't want to mention his name. I've got him. It was an interesting name. Hard to forget. And OJ's watching this. And she's doing basically the chicken head on it, you know, the anyway. So she's and he's he's looking in the window. This is a while back. OJ brought that up later on to show you that look, I'm not a, a murderer. If I was a murderer, I would have killed that guy whose name I, I don't want to say, but it was a it was a it was a mouthful. Okay. And interesting pun that I just use that. <clears throat> So he's fed up with this. He is fed up. His life is over. Now, at the time of the murder, OJ was doing this movie called Frogmen. What was it about? It's about being a frogman. You know, like SEAL, Navy SEAL, but before the Navy SEAL, before Buds, it was they were a Navy, it was a frogman. And what did they do? <coughs> Please. The hot pepper is called from the puckered butt. It's a uh, little reaper. And I, I just, just a couple of shots and it just stays with you forever. So please forgive me. Pardon my coughing. I hope it passes, but you're going to want to hear this. So he was doing this movie at the time, Frogmen. And all day long, he's listening. He's talking to ex frogmen, Navy frogmen. Okay. You got it? Navy frogmen. And interesting, he's hearing about what they did. They wore a cap. One of those wool caps. Why? Coming out of the water. Also camouflage, but the wool cap. 
He had a knife. He's doing knife stuff. He's talking to ex seals all day or buds or listen to me. I like Don Shipley here, you know, those, and he's talking about how they use the knife for this and that. So he's all day long. He's talking to them. Silent kill, pull them out of the boat. They don't make a noise. Wearing the hat. You got it. This is what he's thinking. This is what he's doing every day as he waits during the court. And people go up to him and they, of course, want to impress. Hey, you're O.J. Simpson. Well, I was in the Navy and here's how we kill people. Ooh, so on his mind, what is a, what is he thinking all the time? Sl sl slicing throats, knives, throats. Okay. He's supposed to take a flight to Chicago. Now, listen carefully. He's supposed to take a flight. But before he does, and this story gets really weird, but before he takes his red eye, it seems like maybe he he drove on over there. And he just wanted to see, and he had the mask. He had that, 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 that mask, and maybe he's trying to hide. He had the knife. Some people say maybe he was there gonna he was gonna puncture her tires. But he had the knife. And he might have been cranked out of his mind, either on meth or coke or something. And the reason why is there was a woman, or somebody, a woman, I believe, who was willing to testify that she saw, she saw the, <clears throat> by the way, Bud is for Bud's basic underwater demolition <coughs> squad or something. It, it was the precursor to the, well, basically it's part of the SEAL training, underwater demolition. Anyway, so she says she was there and all of a sudden she sees this white Bronco right around the time of the murder, driving like a bat out of hell. And she looks over and goes, there's OJ Simpson. You can't miss him. His head was like this, driving like a maniac. And she says, well, what was going on? I mean, like, ah, 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 honking because he's got to get back. Plus he just killed two people. Ah, ah, ah. And he looks fried. Like, I got to get back. I got to get the hell out of here. They decided not to use her testimony. Why, did you ask? Because they thought that because he sold his testimony, because he, he she, she sold it to, I don't know, some TV show, <clears throat> that somehow she wouldn't be uh, a, a, a credible witness. Now, that is such nonsense. The first question I would ask her in the, during, you know, during the presenting, during the direct testimony is, ma'am, did you, did, did you sell this story? Yes, I did. To entertainment tonight? Yes, I did. And did you, and they, oh yeah, they paid you. And, and why did you sell it? Because I saw it. You see, they only pay people who actually saw it. That's why they paid me because I saw it. I saw O.J. Simpson. But these jadrules who ran the prosecution, they said, no, we can't put her on the stand because she has no credibility. Credibility, my ass. She's got more credibility than anybody. She was there. That's why they paid her, because she saw it. But no, no, they're, they're Marsha Clark and Christopher Dart. No, they were geniuses. So <coughs> what probably happened was, O.J. Simpson's going there. He's just thinking about this. He's pissed off that day. They went to Mezzaluna. They were there with the kid. It was somebody's birthday, whatever the hell it was. And she and Paula Barbieri doesn't want him. He's not the big football stud anymore. Maybe he's not that, whatever it is. Plus, he might be cranked out of his mind or whatever the hell he was on. And she shows up and there's like... Um, if I recall correctly, like, like lights, you know, like candles, you know, votives or whatever it was. So he's thinking, there's that guy again. She's going to, she's going to, I know what you're going to do. <coughs> another boyfriend, another boyfriend, huh? I've got nothing and you're just, and, and I got to pay for this place and you, and all these men are coming in and you, and you're running a bath and I know what you're going to do and there's candles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I, I guess I ruined your night. Who shows up? Ron Goldman. Why? Judita, if I recall correctly, the mother left her glasses at the restaurant, Mezzaluna. And he was the waiter. So he's bringing them back. Or was he? 
Or was he just going to get a little from Nicole? And OJ's had enough of that. He's got this knife. That he might have, I don't think he went there wanting to kill anybody. I don't think so. I think he had it because, <clears throat> again, he's making, I think he had, I think he had the, the, the watch cap. They found like a watch cap. Uh, why, why OJ Simpson has a watch cap? I have no idea. But anyway, who, who knows? So then there's this, the, the, the uh, I think it's consistent with the fact that he and she have this thing. Now, men, ladies too. Sometimes people who are in relationships can say something to the other that makes them lose their mind. I mean, makes them just, can, you know, can kind of do a roll of the eye or, you know, or something. And you just lose your shit. You know, God! Plus, when you're cranked out of your mind, maybe, maybe, as was suspected. Because there was somebody there who said he used to go to this Burger King and buy drugs. There was so much, there was so much information. I sat every day, I'm, some of it was, was admissible, some of it wasn't. But I lived this case. <coughs> so he goes there. They start at it. And who comes up the walkway? Ron Goldman. Worst day of his life. He probably said, hey, you're OJ Simpson. <laughs> now, he probably went berserk. I mean, he's got a knife and he went berserk. I don't think OJ is a killer. I don't think his basic disposition, except for that day or that night. He showed defensive wounds. There was this little area where he was, and OJ is big. And I was in um, Santa Monica during his civil trial in the courtroom. Oh, with Ron Goldman's father and the, the sister and this little room. And OJ walked into the room, and I mean, this guy. And he had this Ron Goldman in the, he couldn't get out. It was like penned in. I mean, just, and just let him have it. And you could see the 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 these stabs were like sticking them and like lifting them up like almost like 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 a like a roast you know ah. hers oh he almost decapitated her he almost decapitated her they her you you've got to see those pictures <coughs> I mean he went berserk this is somebody you hate and whoever, when they showed up and they said, look, who the, look, 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 look. Whoever killed these people hated them. This wasn't a robbery. This was beyond that. This was beyond anything you've ever seen before. She shows him defensive and there was this one scene, this one little bit of blood that was interesting. And it was almost like a handprint, like, like a swipe. Like, yeah, get out of here, like. Yeah. And she, I mean, she almost hinged. I mean, he almost decapitated her. I mean, just brutal. He gets in the car, gets in the Bronco. He has gloves, has a hat, right? Again, why he needs a hat, I have no idea. But think, remember, he's in that movie. And he's, I don't know, who knows? He's got to get the hell back. He's got to get back. I mean, back and fast. Why? There's a guy named Alan Park. Now, Alan Park, listen to this. He's the limo driver. And he was supposed to take OJ to the airport for this red eye to Chicago or whatever it was. <clears throat> During the time that this happened, Alan Park was so excited. I'm going to take O.J. Simpson. This was a big deal. So he wanted to get there early. But he wanted to make sure that he knew, because it was a weird, this Rocky him is weird. You know, you got to kind of weird, um, hard people. Because he, he had this big limo and he wasn't sure if he could. He just wanted to get there early. Just on time, get there early, just to make sure he could 
make the turn? You know, do I do I pick him up in the street? Do I can I can I pull up in the driveway? He wasn't even sure exactly of the location. So he makes he's there. He drives around once. There's no white Bronco. He drives around again. There's a white Bronco parked real fast, <clears throat> like somebody just pulled up and ran out. Now OJ's got this gate. He's got his Bentley inside and this other car inside. He's going to be away. He's going to be away. So he has all his cars in there except the white Bronco. Why? Because he just got there. I don't know if they tested the hood to see if it was hot or who knows. So he goes, what the hell is this? OJ thinks, oh, God, I got I got to I gotta get in here somehow. I can't go to the front gate. So on the side of the property, this is where Kato Kalen lived. There's this little area <coughs> where you can, I'm sorry for the coffee, where you can run. Or you can walk, rather, between this fence and this kind of guest house. But it's kind of dark, or maybe they're shaded. But there's a <clears throat> an air conditioner. <clears throat> and OJ is running to get back inside to get ready. Because this guy is, eh, eh, he's hitting the buzzer. He goes, oh, shit. OJ is running and just nails this air conditioner piece or whatever is protruding. And K Kato Kalen says, here's it. Boom. He remembers the time. He goes, what the hell is that? Kato was just basically this bum who stayed with them. Nice guy. Met him. Was a nice guy. But he's, you know. OJ goes around. Alan Park says, I saw this dark figure. Was it a man or a woman? He goes, I couldn't tell. But if it was woman, it was a six foot two black. Could be woman the size of an ex football player. He goes in. Eh, eh, Alan Park's hitting the buzzer. OJ's upstairs running a load of wash. Why? The blood. The blood. And at at the time that he ran, most probably then he had the gloves in his pocket when he hit that whatever it was. The glove fell out. His glove that he used to kill Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman. Because he killed him. There's no, I mean, <clears throat> you can give me all this nonsense about, well, there could be justice. Stop it. So all of a sudden he goes in and he, he just like, OJ, ever the fastidious one, just like, I'm, I'm going to run some wash. Now at some point, Johnny Cochran, whom I later met, Worked with him at Core TV and absolutely loved him. Was the nicest man. I mean, uh, did a great job. And he was a great lawyer. And died too young and, far, and tragically. Johnny kept talking a lot of shit. A lot of shit. And what he did was he decided that he was going to... Uh, how do we say this? Pardon me. Just a second. Um, anyway, sorry about that. Mrs. L is contacting me and she comes first. <clears throat> oh, Johnny Cocker said, well, you know, when he came in, he might have, OJ might have, oh, OJ was in the backyard pitching golf balls, pitch, uh, chipping, chipping, what? Chipping golf balls. In his backyard? Yeah. Before he's going to go on a red eye? Yeah. And then he goes, oh, no, no, he was in, he was, he was late because, uh, late, uh, because he was taking a nap. Taking a nap before a red eye? This doesn't make any sense. It makes no sense. Just a minute. Um. Anyway, there's Alan Park. <clears throat> now understand. Here's here's the here's the, the, the this 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 Bronco. This is so perfect. The Bronco 
that the lady saw driving up by a, by a madman with OJ. She could have pieced this together perfectly, but they didn't want to use her because, well, you know, you know, that's, she sold her story and she's not believable. Sparky says, I think it was a window or air conditioner, window air conditioner. <clears throat> right. OJ ran into it. Right. OJ, but boom. Boom. And this guy, imagine, imagine OJ, Sparky. I mean, just full throttle. I mean, knocked the shit out of him. Pow. And then, anyway. So then Johnny Cochran said, well, he, these stories make no sense. Well, he was taking a nap. Before a red eye, you sleep on the plane. Oh, yeah, yeah. Maybe he was in the back girl, backyard chipping, go chipping golf balls. What? That's why they start talking some stuff. This is where the glove fell out. <clears throat> Now the 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 mask the the the, the uh, for some reason the 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 cap you know that's got hair and it reminds me of a case I had with a hair in it I don't really know so anyway he goes to he goes listen to this he goes to he goes to Chicago that's when they thought they might he might have gotten rid of the knife or given it to Kardashian's father who was OJ's lawyer okay okay. Very interesting. So they're over there in Chicago. There was a man on the flight who said OJ was very personal. I don't think he's a psychopath, but my God, I don't know about you. I've just slit the throat of my, I mean, I would be ordering drinks. I would be like, whew. Now, at one particular point, they noticed on the side of this Bronco, they have this, look, there's a drop of blood. There's a drop of blood. And they found blood in the Bronco. This got into the, th this, this was the most important stuff around. This, this became part of the forensics. And people started to say things that I found most interesting, such as, why wasn't there more blood in the Bronco? I'll never forget that. Why wasn't there more blood in the Bronco? Why? Why? To which I answered, why was there any blood in the Bronco? People imagine there should have been just volumes of blood. Oh, they should have been covered. <clears throat> Interestingly enough, especially when he rips open the throat. We had a guy on one time who was a uh, an emergency room physician here in New York. He says, when you're stabbed and your heart stops or is affected or the pumping and the circulation is limited, you don't have that pressure buildup, so to speak. So slicing a throat may result in blood flying across the room. But if, if it is a part of this... Um, if if your blood pressure has already has already dropped significantly because of this, well then it won't be. So there's all kinds of variations for this, but the question is not why wasn't there more blood? Why was there any blood? Why was there blood? Now during the course of this, these two bumbling oafs, Lang and Van Adder, took blood samples and they had them. They left them on their pocket. They had him on the dashboard of the car. And does this have any effect on us? None whatsoever. None. None. But anything to get that jury, that L.A. jury, remember, remember what they did was, I forget who it was, but they went to, oh, Gil, Gil Garcetti, I believe. I think he was a DA. And they said, we are not going to have another Rodney King. here. If you have a jury that's out there in Brentwood or whatever it is, no. They're, he's going to be acquitted. Or no, he's going to be convicted. And then we're done. We better have him in the hood. Right here in LA. Even though it's not even the venue. <clears throat> Because they say no case is worth going through this again. Because those they, they will tear this. Because all of a sudden, the black community became associated with OJ. OJ was one of theirs. OJ had nothing to do with the black community ever. 
maybe when he was a young man, but not later on. His friends were as white and he was with his Bentley and playing golf and Brentwood and oh man, Larry David was more of a brother than him. I mean, it was beautiful. What a bunch of nonsense. So it gets better. There's more stuff that happens. So they start making they start they start making all these these references to the fact that the blood was tainted. The blood was and if the if the glove does if it we'll get to the glove in a moment. Now I'm I'm gonna jump around a little bit. There was a fellow named Mark Furman. Mark Furman was a police officer who was the racist cop. And he was selling his a book or a story to, I believe, an author who might have had <clears throat> him on tape. And he was trying to develop the story, maybe braggadocious, maybe he was trying to, you know, the author. I have no idea. But he became super cop. And he was using phrases that, well, as you can imagine, were less than nice because he's trying to show people this is the way cops talk. This is the way we talk. And he's going through this stuff. And he's using the N-word like you cannot believe. And this and that. Because, you know, when you pick up a couple of N's, and this is from this was in the past. This is some book deal or has nothing to do with O.J. Simpson. F. Lee Bailey got a hold of this, found out about it, and said, if somebody were to tell you that you used the word N-word within the past whatever years, would they be telling the truth? He goes, I never did that. Really? What about this? Blah, 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 blah. Now, Mark Furman, by the way, but most people don't know, is there was a black family that, I think their son was killed. Their son was killed. And Mark Furman became very, very close to the family. And I think they had like Thanksgiving dinner together every year. They were very, very close. He wasn't a racist. He was a cop. And cops see the worst stuff you can imagine. He later pled no contest to perjury. I asked him, I said, why did you plead to perjury? This is not perjury because this is a prior a, 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 a statement that basically is not the truth. But it's not regarding a material issue in fact. The material issue, in fact, is did you steal the guy? Uh, uh, did, did, you, did, did you plant the, the, the glove? Did you plant? You know, that would be relevant. But not five years ago. Did you ever use the N word when you were talking to um, some author you're trying to impress? I said, why did you plead no contest? I would have said, that's not perjury. Goes, I just want to get it over with. Stupid. Stupid. That's not perjury. That's a collateral matter. In cases, people lie all the time. They'll say, did I say red shirt? Oh, okay, it was a blue shirt. Is that your perjury? No, it's not material. I didn't do it. No, 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 no. But he dropped it. Now, here's the thing, too. Listen to this one. Why they didn't bring it up, I have no idea. I said, Mark, because that's his name. He was at WABC. And I'm talking to him. I said, Mark. Did you know where O.J. Simpson was the night of the murder? He said, no. Could O.J. have been in Brazil or Madagascar or some other place? You know, St. Louis? Could he have been out of town? Yes. So if you were to drop the glove, plant the glove, and say, aha, this is O.J.'s glove, and then you find out O.J.'s in Brazil, you'd look like a goddamn fool and a perjurer, and a liar, because you have to know where he is. You have to know all this before you plant evidence. Okay? They didn't bring that up. Now, during the course of the trial, the famous, if the glove don't fit, you must acquit. <coughs> I had Johnny Cochran on my show, on WABC, after the fact. And uh, I forget what it was, Oh, no, I don't know. Yeah, it was, it was about something else, but, but we talked about this. And as the board op is kind of counting me down, again, he's a wonderful man. Johnny Cochran is the greatest guy in the world. Okay? The greatest. And uh, this is interesting. He says, or I noticed we, we had a couple of seconds. The guy's timing 30 seconds 
and and I knew I could time this as no, you know, Johnny. Uh, I think we're all gonna remember the five. He's counting it on ten. I said, Well, remember the if you if the glove don't fit, you must have quit. I said, You know what I would have said? He goes, No, what? Five. I said, I would have said, and if you acquit, you're full of shit. And just then we're back with Johnny Cochran, and he is laughing his ass off. And I'm not telling anybody what we're laughing about. Now, Johnny Cochran knew this. I uh, I did not ask him. You do not ask a lawyer. Johnny Cochran knew the whole story. The original team was a guy Howard Weitzman had. I remember Howard Weitzman. I don't know what Howard Weitzman. Uh, I think he passed away. Howard Weitzman didn't want anything to do with it. He was like the big, the big L.A. Uh, criminal lawyer. I don't really know what happened. Um, Shapiro was a weird duck. I think he he. I don't know what he did. The dream team. Barry Sheck was terrific. Newfeld was great. I think Dershowitz argued something later on. They had they had more, they had a team more reasonable doubt than you can imagine. And that jury, I don't think he made a mistake. They found reasonable doubt, but I went, but he killed him. Because I went to see I again, I went to the to the Trial in Santa Monica. Now, here's something interesting. When they called OJ in Chicago, now he supposedly doesn't know this. OJ, yes, we have bad news. What is it? Someone murdered your ex-wife. He never asked which one. He was married to Chiquita, whatever it was, the first one. And Nicole was the second one. He never asked. He never said, well, which one? What happened? It was almost, oh, okay. Hmm. Well, I guess I, gotta, better, I better get back. So he gets back. Now, at the time of the slow speed chase, it was a time about, oh, Jay, you're going to turn yourself in. You're going to do this and that. Now, the story, the story starts off, the story was back in the slow speed chase. He was on his way to either her grave and OJ had a, a suicide note. And I said, OJ Simpson was never going to kill himself under any circumstance whatsoever. Never. He'll kill other people, but not himself. OJ Simpson will not, could not, and would absolutely not kill himself under any circumstance whatsoever. Do you hear me? Not. One way, no way. Uh -uh. So he has ten thousand dollars and a, oh, and a mustache. Now, who are we supposed to fool? Guy's got the biggest head you've ever seen. And I guess he says, you know, uh, who are you? Hey, are you? What is it? No, I'm Frito Bandito. Look, he's got this this outfit on, and the money and the cash. Where are you going if you're going to kill yourself? What's the cash for? What do you, what, 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 makes no sense. None of it. Complete nonsense. They pull in. OJ's inside. They wait. Remember, he comes and he turns himself in and all that kind of jazz. Okay. We start. Now, some interesting things that happened. OJ did not take the stand. But before we did this, he did do this, one of the greatest performances of ever, of all time. Of all time. The gloves were kept, the gloves, the bloodied gloves, the blood, the glove, blood, the gloves were kept in a plastic bag, plastic evidence bag or something like that. Whereas they can get <coughs> wet and tacky and shrink and they can do all this kind of stuff. They can, you know, by virtue of the fact that they're kept in this. That's not the way to preserve leather gloves like this. There was a particular mode and style and they should have been kept out and dry. Christopher Darden, who Marsha Clark at the time, because you know you work together, I guess very close. They've got the gloves they found. And Christopher and F. Lee Bailey plans this perfectly. He goes over to Darden and says, quote, You have the balls, and this is and this is straight from memory now. You have the balls of a church mouse or a door mouse or a field mouse or some kind of a mouse if you don't make OJ put those gloves on. 
You don't let me check this. F. Lee Bailey, Darden. You don't have the balls. Let's see where this one was. You have oh. <coughs> Bailey said he told Darden that he had the balls of a stud field mouse. Stud. So Christopher Darden, because he's a, as we say in West Tampa, he's a come mierda, an idiot, a jadrool. Instead of saying, okay, but first, let's take the jury out. <laughs> and then we're going to put the gloves on. And gonna, if, if that's what you want to do. But here's the best news. Because they were worried, I guess, about AIDS or something, or I don't know what. They put rubber gloves on OJ. So rubber, so OJ's putting these this shrunk leather gloves over over um rubber gloves. So they don't fit. And OJ's putting on the 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 acting of a life like oh uh, e this guy who take who's taking tackles and blitzes and he goes oh and he's trying to, ah, 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 ah. Oh, doesn't fit. Da, 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 da. And Johnny Cochran, remember he put the, the cap on? Why they never looked inside the cap for hair, I have no idea. And if you, if the gloves don't fit, you must have quit. Johnny had that kind of mouth like that. Yeah, Johnny had that mouth like that. It's like a Bill Murray and Caddyshack. I remember at the time Judge Ito, the worst judge of all time. The worst judge ever in the history of American jurisprudence. The worst. One time during the course of this, Larry King showed up with his daughter, Kiara, Ciara, whatever her name was. Ito sees her and says, ooh, ooh, and, 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 and gets off the bench and says, oh, my, excuse me, Mr. King, you know, welcome. I said, what are you doing? He would let people Oh, radio stations started sending him mugs, sending them mugs. You know, radio, and I remember our old station in Tampa sent him a mug, and there's a picture of them because he had that he had that uh, laptop with the stickers, but these these mugs, radio. I mean, Edo Edo was the worst. Absolutely no control whatsoever. When the verdict came out. We, I was very suspect of something because the judge said, give me a day. It says after they had the verdict, because I thought they convicted him. So he's, he's giving them a day so he can call the, but we never really saw the jury and no people say, well, they were all black and I've never subscribed to that. I'm sorry. But OJ was a different story because the police, the LA police, were on trial. Not O.J. Simpson, the L.A. police. Now, the civil trial comes. O.J. has to take the stand. He has to take the stand. <clears throat> and there were these size 12 Bruno Magli or Magli shoes that were supposedly, there was a footprint there was something. And O.J. Simpson said, you'll never catch me wearing those ugly ass shoes. He says this. He says this. Okay? You understand this? He says, you'll never, you'll never catch me wearing those ugly ass shoes. He said this. There was a picture Taken from the Buffalo Bills, uh, I don't know what it was. It was a it was a program or something. And there's a picture of OJ walking with Nicole, and they blew it up in the courtroom. And guess what he was wearing? The ugly ass shoes. Is a Sparky says uh, prosecution was very substandard, in my opinion. Oh, without a doubt. Because they made it very complicated. You're so right. But you know, Sparky, here's what they could have said. 
This is what OJ could have said, which I think is the most important, the most critical, and the most absolutely, the most absolutely important thing ever. Listen to me carefully. But before I tell you, OJ's best defense at the time, which he never utilized, I want you to listen to this. One sponsor, one, because this is a special that goes on this week only, and then I'll tell you what OJ should have done. It's no longer a question of if something is coming, it's when. The only shock, the what, the how. While you still have some control, what are you going to do about it? Well, the first step is to go to my website at preparewithlionel.com. The next step is stocking up on multiple one-week emergency food kits from my Patriot Supply. Priced at under $50, now's the time to buy in bulk. My Patriot Supply is equipped to help you prepare. They've helped over 2 million families already. These one-week kits with Ready Hour Foods provide over 2,000 calories every day. And they're sealed inside a rugged ammo can so they can last to up to 25 years in storage. So just grab it and go in emergencies. Get these kits for under $50 this week only at preparewithlionel.com. That's preparewithlionel.com. Now, here's what I wish you would have done. And I know this is a bit strange, but I want you to hear me out and think about this. Imagine if O.J. Simpson, after he killed these people, he picks up his phone. He's covered in blood. He's got the knife, the whole bit, standing right there. There's Nicole. There's Ryan Goldman. He picks up the phone and says, hello. Yeah, O.J. Simpson here. Listen, can you send somebody up to Bundy? But yeah. Yeah, there's been a murder. Yeah, I'll be here. I'll be in the front. Yeah, O.J. Simpson. Yep, that's me. Click. Police show up. What happened? Right there, Judge. I mean, uh, officer. And by the way, here's this knife. Don't touch it. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to. How come you're covered in blood? Because I called you. I, I went to see if she was alive. This is my ex-wife, the mother of my children. And this young man, I don't know who he is. I wanted to see if he was okay. So I guess I got the blood on me. What about these footprints? Excuse me, I'm standing here. I just told you. Yes, they're my size 12, Bruno Mali. Yeah, 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 that's me. That would have been it. Nobody saw it. It would have taken one person to walk by and say, is that OJ Simpson stabbing these people? Nobody was up. It was a nice night. Nothing. I think somebody with a dog, I think somebody with a dog noticed somebody came up and found that they were there and i mean th that would have been it it was the trial of trials the civil trial he took the stand and buried himself he was found obviously liable now remember at the time it was the case of the case was it the trial of the century I think maybe the Lindbergh trial was, but it was close. And I can't say this enough to you. There was no internet. There was no Twitter, no Facebook, no nothing. The only thing people had was me in the morning, WABC. And then later on, there were some people. And then you could watch Core TV when they, they kind of came about. Nancy Gray started and Diane Diamond was on there and others as well. I was on one time with, I got a call from Charles. Well, let, let, let me go back. This is the most important thing. The, nobody knew what to do with this story. Nobody knew what to do with uh, this. It, 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 it was so brand new. And I got a call one night from Charles Grodin. Charles Grodin was told to listen to me by Jack Parr. And I verified this later because Grodin told me and Regis Philbin told me because they were all buddies in Greenwich or whatever it was. And Jack Parr, who was my hero, because his thing used to listen, and I never met him. I had no idea. So Charles Grodin invites me on to talk about OJ. And he was the one who said, he's guilty. 
I said, he's guilty. I said, we're trying to get away. I mean, everybody's sugarcoating. I said, what are you people talking about? He's guilty. He's trying to get away. It's called flight. It's a jury instruction. People get away because they killed him. Anyway, and he liked it. So I went to Fort Lee. It was the old CNBC. It was, there was, I think it was America's Talking or something like that, which, by the way, was the original Roger Ailes. This is before Fox News. This is how old it was. So I went there with Charles Grodin. And he said, I'm so sorry. I said, what's the matter? He said, I only have like a couple of minutes. I said, do me a favor. Ask me, what do you think? And just sit back. That's it. And he did. And I came out of the seat. And I packed more information and whatever it was. Because I was living and breathing this thing. You don't just tell me this because he's guilty. And I don't know what's up. What are you people, crazy? You think this is what, an identical stranger who did this? Do you realize the happenstance of this? None of it makes any sense. And I'm going to get the the prosecution and the back of the bed and the bend of the truck and the Bronco and the blood. And what do you want? Anyway, what do you want, pictures? So when I got done, Groden said, that was great. And was on all the time. We got to be buddies and talk about this thing all the time. So one night, I was on with. It was then Tavis Smiley. He was kind of coming. And Tavis was 100% pro, not pro OJ, but OJ was a black man, I guess. I don't know. I guess he still is a black man. Was my. So anyway, so uh, when I heard Tavis Smiley, I said, Tavis? Sounds like an antihistamine. Because it's called Tavis. I think Tavis is an antihistamine or something like that. Anyway, so that really pissed him off. So one day, so I was in the, I was in the makeup room when all of a sudden somebody came in and said, this was the producer, he goes, okay, I got to tell you this. So I'm telling you this, all right? Okay. Tavis wants me to tell you to leave him alone and blah, blah, blah. Okay, I told you. <laughs> That's it. Thank you for telling me. Now, tear him up. And we would go at it like you can't believe. Sparky says, Johnny Cochran practiced law in Atlanta for a while. He was well-regarded around town. We hated to see him die so young. What a gentleman he was. What a gentleman. I last last time I think I saw him was he was with I think his father, Johnny Cochran Sr. at Patsy's on 56th Street here in New York. Wonderful man. Wonderful. Uh it it was the time and everybody, let me tell you something. Everybody went from People going to, you know, bars and saying, hey, can you change that to the next game? They would say, you think there was a hearsay exception to the hearsay rule? And, and I had the best time explaining, well, here's what the judge did, and here's the problem. And this is called cross-examination. This is direct examination. This is impeachment. This is hearsay. This is evidence. Uh, reasonable doubt. What does reasonable doubt mean? What about this? What about your All of this stuff, because people, you have, I'm, I'm trying to tell you something. If you remember this, if you're, if you're significantly beyond 30, there was nothing like this. And it was, now OJ wrote a book later, he says, if I did it, and I said he should call it, if I did it again. Remember this? This was, this was Judith Regan. Remember her story? Oh, don't, I don't want to get into the, the weeds here. But it was before, so Court TV came along, Nancy Grace came along and people said, you know, they really get into this. People watching, becoming a part of the case. And I mean to tell you, th and I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you this. It was better without Twitter, better without internet, better. I know you might say to yourself, That's... because now there's an inundation. For those fine, fine members of watching who remember this, do you not agree? That it was better than when I mean better, it was pure, it was beautiful, it was an event. You, if you think the 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 eclipse was something, man, you I have no idea what the hell. That was. This was the greatest thing in the world, and and what it was was this was somebody who lost his shit. That's it. That's that's it. It wasn't first degree murder, though theoretically the amount of time it takes to premeditate is seconds, but he went nuts. He went nuts. And don't forget, Norm MacDonald made so much, he basically was, was canned from uh, SNL. 
I think Don Olmeyer, who, who ran it, was OJ's buddy, hated the jokes. And there was no doubt that OJ did it. But here's the story. It wasn't who did it. It's can they prove it. I would have said exactly the same thing. That jury wanted to find the LAPD. Uh, it was about them. It was about them. They did a wonderful job. They'd run a Mikado Kalen. There were these, um, his OJ, OJ was, let me also tell you something which is interesting, I think. When you tell a lie long enough, you become the lie. It becomes a part of you. It becomes so entwined, so much a part of you that you, you, how do I say this? You, you become it. It enwraps itself around your soul. OJ was not a psychopath in the classics. I mean, he, he, he just, but he was in the fight of his life. He could not let go. He could not probably believe he even did this. I don't think there's any evidence. Oh, another thing too, would show you how, uh, no, another stupid thing. They had a jury consultant, Marsha Clark, who, just she went nowhere with this. Remember that she just very unlikable. Jury consultant said, Black women hate you. They're on the jury. Get her off of here. Marsha Clark says, No way, I'm getting off this jury. Okay. Second thing, lose the escalating domestic violence defense. You see, what Marsha Clark wanted to do was Marsha Clark wanted to say. Now, what this was, was this was this was going to happen for a long time. They waited this 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 was for a long time. This was this was a matter of this was building up. And they had pictures of uh, Nicole with the her mouth was bruised and she took pictures. And uh, OJ, you know, was you remember that phone call? You son of a bitch, you know. And the jury consultant said to Marsha Clark, "These black women most probably have all." This was what was said at the time have been the product of or the victim of um, domestic violence. And they do not believe for a moment that this somehow escalates into murder. This doesn't work. This is Marsha Clark doing this um, demented lunacy where she... Um, the, how, how you say this, but she just she just figured, I'm going to go with that. That's my theory. No, no. And and the and the 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 case was you build the connective tissue. <clears throat> Imagine this: a woman sees OJ riding his driving his Bronco at the time of the murder. Bronco is not there at the scene. Alan Parks testifies. Then it's there, parked at an angle left when all the other cars are left inside a body a dark figure side of the house goes in all of a sudden lights go on i'll be there in five minutes oj's coming around and he's ready to go off to whatever it was now that's it blood mm. had they been a little bit better but even with the blood because remember they took away that. The jury, in essence, told them, "Listen, we're going to find the find him not guilty. Just do me, just, just get rid of this blood for us, and we'll do the rest. We won't. We'll just hang it all on the blood." But most people would have said, "Now, I, I, I got to be honest with you. I it, it, there was a lot of doubt. You can do. Oh, by the way, uh, Kardashian, the father, most probably, most probably, they believe." stole the, or uh, 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 emptied, or got rid of the uh, the knife. Sparky says, LA police's long-standing reputation didn't help. Oh yeah, that's exactly right, Sparky. Because that's what I'm saying. This was a chance for the black community to say, okay, we've had to sit around for years when we had our uh, defendants on the stand from the Scottsboro boys to whatever it is. And we had to put up with this. And we had to tolerate that. And we had to. You didn't care about that. Where were you then? But all of a sudden, 
Oh, all of a sudden, now you're, now you're in. Oh, now you could, now, now you want justice. Well, you know what? There is no justice. Surprise, surprise, surprise. There is no justice. But you didn't care about justice before at all. You never cared about it. Never cared about it in the least. But now you do. Because this black man beat you at your game. How does it feel? Don't think for a moment that that wasn't the way it is or that it's not warranted. Let me explain something to you. And I think you know this. I'm a realist, to use the Mearsheimer term, term. I don't care how things were supposed to be. I care how things are. And there is a racial animus in this country, the likes of which you can't believe from years and years and decades and deca decades of a lot of stuff that, well, you, you may not like. O.J. Simpson absolutely killed these two people. There's no doubt about it. I was in this room with Ron Goldman's father and his sister. I forget their name. And they were like right there. He had, remember the, the handlebar mustache? When O.J. walked in from the back of the courtroom to the seat, I saw his face, the father. I said, they're going to kill this guy. I hope there's a metal detector here because this guy had a look on his face of absolute, unmitigated, unparalleled hatred and animus, the likes of which you can't believe. This case basically sucked up every bit of oxygen in the room. It compelled testimony. It was... It, it was... And because there, people couldn't see it during the day. Do you know that when the jury verdict came out, do you know that in New York, restaurants reported that people walked out on their bills? They were just, they just walked out. When the verdict came in, it was split screen. Let's go to Spellman. Let's go to Morehouse. Let's go to Howard University. You know, institution, black colleges. And it was like, yeah. Now let's go to University of Alabama. And they were crying. And boy, that showed me. Everything. Everything. But if you get a chance, look at the pictures. You can't understand it unless you look at the degree of savagery. You can't see it. This was the telltale marks of somebody who hated this and, and slash or in a rage a drug-fueled rage. And don't forget, there was this one guy who said he went to a Burger King or something, and he would buy drugs for OJ, and a lot of this stuff never got in. And there's no way to, you know, to check, test the credibility of it. Henry Lee, the blood splatter expert. Um, I went to a, a wedding one time of... Uh, Michael Baden and his wife, and everybody was there. I mean, it was like one big, it was like, well, who's who? And Barry Sheck has saved more lives with his Innocence Project. I don't think he was that proud of the OJ thing, but, you know, a deal's a deal. There were a lot of police and experts who testified on behalf of OJ Simpson. But he absolutely killed these people. And it happens. And it was one of those happens. And of course, if he could go back and do it again, he's not going to kill anybody else. He was one of the nicest, most energy, uh, charismatic people. He threw everything. And the only time he really spent he spent time in prison was when he went back and tried to retrieve his, his mem memorabilia and they got him for robbery. Remember that one? O.J. Simpson, and you know this, as a football player, unparalleled. Who cares? I don't care if Jack Nicholas kills his wife. He's a killer. And it, but he's not a serial killer. As killers go, and the sisters tried to milk this. I think it was Denise Brown. She tried, that didn't work. Larry King. I always have one of the Brown sisters on. You know. And OJ, by the way, by the way, it's Orenthal. Have you heard people pronounce his name today? It's like they, never, they didn't read the word ahead of time. There was a thing I saw one time 
rather heard about, I should say. Whenever you're in radio, whatever, you always read the copy first. You always read the copy. And this fellow was doing um, tennis, Wimbledon, and there was one name like Wojciech Feedback and, you know, Slavoslav Slavonovich, you know. Um, and he sits down, he, and he, he didn't bother reading us. And in the second set, it was, so he did, it was, but, on a bitch, 6-2, and the two said tiebreaker. Okay. And the engineer says, what happened? He said, I don't know. The mic uh, seemed to be okay. Poor guy. The engineer like tore the microphone apart. Looked okay to me. I don't know. But he tried to cover himself, obviously. And all of a sudden, it, uh, it, uh, it, and the second match. My friends, I know there are some of you who are going to believe that O.J. Simpson did not commit murder or did not do this. You might have said, well, maybe it's not murder. Maybe it's a movie second degree. Maybe it's heat of passion. Maybe it's depraved. Maybe it's this, maybe it's a modified manslaughter. Maybe it's a maybe it's a real, real aggravated battery. But he did it. And the reason why many people think otherwise is because they don't know what the hell they're talking about. They just don't know what they're talking about. And they have so little critical thinking. But if you were not there and if you did not appreciate what this was this was the eclipse this was you see we're we're hit every day with you name it we're hit with so much information where do you want to go israel you want to go this you want to go russia you want to go clinton are we clinton oh mcclinton you want to go you want to the election you want to go to um, trump mar-a-lago you want to go to diddy you want to go we just have all this information all of this this incredible this was the case it was one story I mean, it, it, it was, it was, it captivated everyone. It was like nothing you've ever seen before. And it gave rise, of course, to Core TV, but it gave rise to people like me. And it was the greatest moment for me to introduce myself. Here I am in New York. I say, like, okay, ta da. At the best, and WABC then was, dear God, you have no idea. Rush Limbaugh, uh, Ed Koch, Bob Grant, Lynn Samuels. Curtis was there, of course, at the time. There was a... It, it was a veritable potpourri. It was, an, it was some of the best stuff ever. By the way, two, the two worst radio shows I ever heard in my life. Two. Number two, Alan Dershowitz. Number one, the worst radio show ever, Mario Cuomo. The worst radio, so bad, so bad, it made me curse oxygen. My friends, thank you for being with us. Thank you for letting me spend an hour and 13 minutes with you. And I give this as you to sign of love. Thank you for letting me relive that moment here as the news broke. And I know OJ's got family, and I understand that, but he's a murderer. I mean, he can be a nice guy, father, but he murders a murderer. Kill these two people. Absolutely as guilty as the day is long. And that's all that matters. We're going to be back again this evening. Thank you, by the way, for, for, for subscribing. Please subscribe. You must, you must, you must, you must subscribe. Also make sure you, this is important, make sure you also subscribe to the uh, Lionel legal version of this. You never know. I might do some arcane legal stuff on that one. But in any event, I thank you. And I thank you for your time. And Sparky, I thank you, my friend, for your kindness this afternoon. Kindness, 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 and generosity. Wait a minute. George Keene says, hold it. George says, your summary video of the OJ Murder Travel is one of your best works on YouTube ever. You may want to bring it back as a feature with an OJ searches that will hit YouTube. Keep up your excellence. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to be doing this because I think people like to hear, George, the idea of the story develop, how it works, how these things happen, where these, how the story is developed and how it still comes down to you. Because you may say to yourself, look, with all due respect to you and the evidence, I hate the LAPD. And I'm going to find him not guilty. I don't give a damn if you have a movie of this. This is about more than 
anything. And don't think people don't think, and don't think, by the way, it's not warranted. I'm sorry to say this, but sometimes it's warranted. This is, you know, you reap what you sow. Sorry. But that's what we're going to do. And I'm going to be doing a, a series of these little videos of OJ and my take on it and what was so important and why, kind of how this, he's just the luckiest man. It would have taken just one person here. What's that noise? There's OJ stabbing these people. That's it. That's it. Or he gets gets into an accident. He's knocked out. He's covered in blood. There's a knife. You know, it, it, so many things could have happened along the way, but it didn't. All right, dear friends, thank you. Thank you immensely. We'll see you tonight at 7 p.m. And who knows? If I feel like doing another live, I just might do it. Because I'm... I'm 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 looking back to a lot, a lot of good times during that murder trial. It sounds weird. A lot of good times. It was a, it was a more of an innocent time. It was before the it was before the internet's before COVID before before the dreck that we live in today. In any event, thank you, dear friends. Have a great and a glorious day. Don't ever change. I mean that sincerely. And until I see you tonight at seven p.m., don't forget the monkey's dead. The show's over. Sue ya. Ta ta.